look at the camera. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Awesome, that's great, thanks a lot. Awesome, you look great. Hey Rams, and welcome to Humans of CSU. I'm Emma Iannacone, and tonight we'll be returning to CSU's roots as the Colorado Agricultural College, which makes tonight's episode Aggies of CSU. The College of Agricultural Sciences is home to a variety of majors, minors, and student organizations. And tonight, we're joined by a member of one of those organizations. Please join me in welcoming Mana Acosta to the show. She is the Treasurer of Minorities in Agricultural, Natural Resources, and Related Sciences, or MANNERS. Welcome to the show, Mana. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'm really glad to have you here because I want to hear more about MANNERS because it's kind of a mouthful of, yes, a, it is. of a name. <laughs> so can you break it down for me? What is um, MANNERS? Like you said, MANNERS is Minorities in Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Related Sciences. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we try to engage people in those majors, mostly uh, minorities, but mm -hmm. anyone's welcome to come to our workshops. And we um, encourage them to develop professional skills, whether it be interview skills or how to build a resume. So we set up workshops for them so people can come in and learn basically how to do what they need to do go into like a professional field. Very cool, awesome. So do you feel like it's been very helpful to you since you've gotten started in the major? Most definitely because I'm, I'm a freshman, I don't really know how to build a resume, how to write a cover letter. Mm -hmm. So having manners there for me, mm -hmm. is it just shows me like I'm not the only one who doesn't know how to do this stuff, mm -hmm. but I could also go to my peers for help and go to my right. advisor for help and the workshops are tremendous help in learning all these sorts of skills. Mm -hmm. That's great. And so why is it important, particularly for minorities in agricultural sciences? Um, mostly because we're very underrepresented under mm -hmm. in the department. So having this club gets pretty much everyone together in one space to see that we're not underrepresented, that we just need to find mm -hmm. each other in our own departments. And I think Manners really helps uh, anyone of different ethnicities like come together and find each other and also find other people in other departments. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what are some of the challenges that people might face as a minority in this kind of industry? Um, most, most challenging is that people might not give you as much credit as that you deserve just because you're a minority. So having to basically prove yourself even when you don't need to is probably one of the biggest challenges that minorities have. Yeah, definitely. And so you are going on the vet track, right? Yes, yeah. I am. So can you tell me a little bit about that? How is you, how's your journey been since you came to CSU? Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> so I'm majoring in animal sciences with mm -hmm. a minor in zoology. And so I'm a, on a pre-vet track. So I have to take all the courses that any vet has to take. Mm -hmm. um, I have to take a lot of livestock courses because CSU is a large animal uh, base and not really small animal. So that's very fun for me and interesting because I don't come from an agricultural background. I grew up in Southern California, so we no farms very near. Mm -hmm, uh, pretty urban. <laughs> yeah, very urban. So it was. it's just interesting for me to be around all this livestock just now. Mm -hmm. So it's very uh, nice for yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah, you were mentioning the livestock practicum that you're in right now? Yes, yeah. uh, I'm in ANEQ 286 with Dr. Cunningham. So. Livestock practicum, we have a lecture in the morning and then a lab in the evening. Our lab is hosted at our research facility called RDEC. So it's a farm off campus and we have working cattle there. So our lab gets to give the cattle vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to, um, we have some pregnant heifers right now. So we got, we're able to palpate them mm -hmm. and feel like the baby calves inside. So it's very interesting and being able to have the stuff we learn in lecture and practice it in lab is super helpful with the hands-on experience of everything. So what does palpate mean? Palpate means to feel um, basically anything because you could palpate a stomach, you could palpate a heart, but mm -hmm. to palpate a pregnant heifer means to go in through the anus and feel oh. the feel the calf uh -huh. through the, uh, the colon and then the and then the right. uterus, yeah. yeah. There you go. I was losing my words. <laughs> wow, what an yeah. interesting experience. Yeah, it was 
very interesting to yeah. say the least. <laughs> yes. That was probably your first time palpating yes. a cow. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. it was the first time for most people. So it was very, mm -hmm. it was very fun to see everyone's faces and everyone's <laughs> reactions going through that whole process. But it was very fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fun, fun times. Yes. Yeah. Was that challenging for you? Uh, it was challenging in the fact that I have never done it before and mm -hmm. a lot of students have or like have seen someone else do it. Mm -hmm. So having to go through the whole process from the beginning and not knowing how have any idea of what I'm doing mm -hmm. was kind of difficult mm -hmm. just because you have the t instructor there telling me every single thing while some students are just right. going head first and knowing what they're doing. So mm -hmm. it was uh, a little frustrating, but I got the hang of it. So it yeah. turned out fine. Yeah. So do you feel like you've been able to handle the learning curve of not having the typical background of someone in the pre-vet program? Yeah, um, all of my professors are very understanding that a lot of us don't come from an agricultural background. Mm -hmm. So they're very open to answering questions. They break things down for us when we don't know. Um, a lot of students who do have an agricultural background say like, hey, if you need help, I'm here. And it's easier to talk to peers than to professors sometimes because that's nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. So having peers uh, who do come from an agriculture background is not always negative, but because they can be some benefits from it, from learning from them and uh, also be like being in the back of the classroom and just asking them questions rather than disturbing the whole lecture. Mm -hmm. So the learning curve is a little bit difficult, but having all these different resources has mm -hmm. helped a lot and yeah. I've been able to manage it. Yeah, so, and do you feel like manners has helped you a lot with that too? Yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, like in the classroom, you don't see your ethnicity being represented a lot. So having manners kind of like shows me that I'm not underrepresented. Like there's mm -hmm. other people here, we're just not in the same classes. Mm -hmm. So we're able to find each other through manners and to go through classes together, like, oh, you're, we're both taking the same class. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for us to find each other in manners than in like a whole department, mm -hmm. so. And it's a national organization, right? Yeah. So have you been to any of their events yet? Or are you um, planning on going to any? We're actually leaving tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, to go to the national conference this weekend. Really? So, yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Yes. What will you be doing there? Um, so there we meet with a lot of employers. There's a lot of career fair settings for um, undergraduate students to find internships or jobs and for graduate students to find jobs. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of employers, employers there on the natural resources side and on the agricultural side. So we get to interact with them a lot. We go to workshops on how to conduct interviews, basically building our own portfolio to help our own chapter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we go to workshops and then we have foods provided, so that's always a plus. Mm -hmm. And then our last night there, we have a black tie gala and ball. Ooh. So we get to dress up yeah. a little fancy and attend that and mm -hmm. just uh, be around other chapters and other ethnicities throughout mm -hmm. the whole conference. So it should be a lot of fun. Awesome, where is it at? It's in Overland City or Overland Park, Kansas. Oh, okay, yeah. kind of yeah, nice. So yeah. Our flight is very short, but mm -hmm. we're, we're excited. Yeah, that sounds so exciting. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming tonight. I no really problem. appreciate it. It was great learning more about manners. Of course. Well, Rams, up next, we're going to take a break from the humans of CSU and look at some of the horses of CSU. We'll be right back. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to Humans of CSU. I'm here with Lillian, the equine, equine sciences major. We are here in the BW Pickett Arena. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about this place? So this arena is where we have a lot of our classes for mm -hmm. many of the programs in the equine science program here at CSU. So we also use it for a lot of the clubs. The polo team will practice in here. 
for a lot of their nights as well. They hold competitions in here. And as you can see, it's set up for the Skyline Stampede that'll happen this weekend. And that's the big rodeo that the rodeo club puts on every year. And it's the oldest running collegiate rodeo in the country. Cool. All right, well, let's take a tour. Sounds I'll follow you. Legends of Ranching program are from all across the country mm -hmm. and they come to us from ranches like Haythorn, Crowfoot, Spurcross and they're all really big ranches that are a big part of the industry. Mm -hmm. So those are all young horses that have really not had any experience, they haven't been trained or ridden, so the students are responsible for bringing all those colts ready to be for the sale. Okay. And then a different program that we have is the Right Horse program mm -hmm. which is what all of these horses are for in the stalls. Oh. And these are the rescue horses horses. Okay. And they also like to call them horses in transition because many of them for one reason or another they can't stay there and they're looking for somewhere else to go. So students are also responsible for helping these horses get trained and get ready to be for in our new home. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different experience than the Colts because they don't yeah. have any experience and these right. ones maybe have experience that is good or maybe not so good. Right, yeah, they have a little bit of a history. There's definitely a big variety of them. Yeah. They come from all over the place. There's ponies, draft horses, paints, quarters. They come from all over. Yeah, hello everyone. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> So typically this barn is open for a lot of the year. The right horses come in here sometimes and then during the sale we stall all of the young horses as well as the age horses that come through the sale as well. So in the month of April it's definitely very crowded in here but for the rest of the time it's usually pretty open. Okay, cool. So tell me a little bit more about the Equine Sciences program. What else is there to do? So we have pretty much everything and anything. So there's one side of it is a lot of science classes, so we have your fundamentals like genetics, mm -hmm. nutrition, anatomy, disease, stuff like that, so that our students really have a good basis when they go into the industry about knowing all aspects of the horse. Mm -hmm. And then for our program, we also require 12 business credits, so students get a lot of the business experience as well. Okay. So we have a lot of students that kind of focus more towards the sciences or more mm -hmm. focus more towards the events management and the business side of it. Mm -hmm. So you can really get anything and everything you want from the program. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So who are these horses and what are they doing here? So a lot of these horses are program horses. Most of the horses on the right hand side are horses that we use for the English riding classes and okay. for some of the other English prep for competition and Western prep for competition classes. So they're program horses that students are allowed to ride for their classes and that way they can get some experience in that way as well. So there are actual English riding classes here mm -hmm. at CSU? Yeah, we have an English prep for competition class and that teaches students how to ride an English saddle and they do a little bit of jumping as well once the students are more advanced. Oh wow, very yeah. cool. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, and then these guys over here. Some of these guys are used for the equine activities equine assisted activities and therapies mm -hmm. so they help people with disabilities and they can be used in a lot of different ways for that they can help people with physical disabilities or mental disabilities so EEAT stands for equine assisted activities and therapies and a lot of people use that for people that are disabled or in any other way like youth programs a lot will use it for at risk youths mm -hmm. and we have a program here where we let different businesses come in like front range exceptional questions and they come programs and get experience in the EAT field and get to help people that way. Okay, so how are these horses trained to help people with disabilities though? So a lot of them is based on their disposition, so you need horses that are going to be calm and quiet and a lot of it focuses on their motion as well because different types of movement under the horse can help a person with different dif disabilities and it can help 
them maybe learn to walk because it's a similar movement as well as when we walk. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's based on movement or based on height, size. Mm -hmm. It kind of depends on what they're being used for, on what their training or their background would be. Okay. And is it mostly uh, children that they're helping with? It's all ages. Okay. Anybody with any kind of disability can participate. There's a lot of children as well as adults. Mm -hmm. So it's all over the place. Oh, really cool. Yeah. Very nice. Do you know any of the horses out here? So we have Zane. He's the one with his rear end towards us. Uh -huh. And you can tell who that is because he has a big Z shaved uh -huh. onto his hip. Yeah. So he's one of the horses that we use in the equine um, for English classes. Hello, Bud. Yeah. Very friendly. Zane. He is very friendly. when they have their big winter coats. Mm -hmm. So obviously when they shed out in the summer, it's not as big of an issue, but they get used a lot in the winter. So it'll help them with that. And then that guy seems to have his own built-in pad on his back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of times they'll leave the area over their back with uh -huh. hair on it still because that's where the saddle sits. Uh -huh. So they don't want it to rub on their skin too much if maybe they have a little bit of a sensitive back. But Zane's pretty close shaven besides his nice little if there's one downside to working at the Foothills campus, it's the wind, which unfortunately messed with our microphones, so we can't play the rest of the interview for you. But if you'd like to learn more about the Equine Sciences program, they, can, they offer tours that can be scheduled at the website below. But if you wanted to see even more horses right now, don't worry because this weekend the CSU Rodeo Club is hosting the Skyline Stampede and we went into their practice before the rodeo to learn more. When Rachel Jackson came to Colorado State University during her junior year, one of the first things she did was find the rodeo club. Oh, I was looking. I knew I only had two years left and I was going to rodeo for CSU no matter where I went with my education. The CSU Rodeo Club is one of the oldest in the country and when you talk to the members, it's easy to see why it's lasted this long. Just ask Kelsey's story, a first year and recent addition to the team. I came from California and I didn't know a single person over here and then I found the Rodeo Club and they're just like a second family to me. They're so supportive. The support goes beyond the team though. Club President Erica Sinclair says the entire rodeo community supports each other on and off the saddle. I think that the community that rodeo builds is just something so unique. Not a lot of sports have such compassion for competitors. I can't tell you how many times I've seen an injury or a hardship, like cancer or something that's come up, and just the entire community just flocks around that person. Since the 1940s, the rodeo club has hosted the Skyline Stampede, the oldest collegiate rodeo in the country. And this year, it's going to be bigger than ever. It has been a monumental year for us as a club. We have scratched and clawed our way to get the opportunities that we have gotten this year to be able to put on the production that we're about to put on this weekend. Students don't just practice their horse riding in the club. They also hone the business management skills necessary to run a rodeo. This is a, an event production and any event requires finances, it requires management, it requires scheduling and those are all aspects that the entire club gets to be involved in. If you don't think you have enough experience to join the club, don't worry. Rachel says it's never too late to start. I didn't come from a rodeo background, it's just something that lit a fire in me and now it's something that I couldn't live without. The Stampede will be April 5th through the 7th, starting at 7 in the evening every night. If you can't make it, don't worry because on Monday, CTV Sports will have a recap. But don't go anywhere, Rams, because up next we'll get to see even more animals, but these ones are a bit smaller and kind of creepier, so stay tuned. You are listening to 90.5 KCSU Fort Collins with DJ Meanby, DJ Nightshade, DJ Wildcard. Music to me is one of the best creative outlets that I can think of. An escape from the real world. Music to me is an expression of love. To go from like folk to hip hop to like classic rock, 1960s bossa nova. With music, there's like no boundaries. And I work here because I love music and you do too.
Welcome back to Humans of CSU Rams. One science you may not have expected to come from the College of Agricultural Sciences is entomology or the study of insects. I'm joined now by Maya Holmes, supervisor of zoo affairs and the CSU Bug Zoo. How are you tonight, Maya? Good, how are you? I'm good. I'm yeah. a little nervous That's about okay. <laughs> what's in front of me, but it's okay because she told me it's just the skin yes. of a tarantula. Yeah, this is called an exuvia. So insects are really interesting and all arthropods do this. They have that exoskeleton, uh -huh. which is something you've probably heard about. Yes. And when they grow, they have to pull themselves out ah, of that skin. So this guy just got bigger and then yeah. decided to leave yeah, this can, behind. Yeah, so right now, this, mm -hmm. is, this is our female salmon pink. Uh -huh. So now she's about that big. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, so I have to ask, what brought you into entomology? So originally, I wanted to be a herpetologist. What is that? That's someone who studies reptiles and amphibians. Oh, okay. And my freshman year, I took a class called Insect Science and Society mm -hmm. with Matt Camper. And I was like, well, this is really interesting. I think I've heard of that class. Yeah. I've heard a lot of really good experiences. I loved that it. Class. Yeah. yeah. And so one of the things you could do as a project is mm -hmm. volunteer in the bug zoo. Okay. So I started doing that mm -hmm. and was like, wait, I like really like <laughs> this. And I started doing outreaches. So uh -huh. I was able to go and interact with kids mm -hmm. and adults and talk about these animals mm -hmm. that I thought were really interesting. Mm -hmm. I did that for a few years and a position opened up where they were trying to expand the zoo and they were going to pay someone to run the bug zoo. So I did that in 2015 and I've mm -hmm. been there since. And now I'm actually a graduate student studying it and I'm now the director of the bug zoo. Oh wow. And I'm actually now Matt Camper's graduate student. Awesome. So yeah. I so like, just full circle. Yeah. I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying I don't like reptiles and amphibians. Right. But, but I really like arthropods. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Well, what's your favorite thing about ar arthropods? There's a lot of arthropods, and so we're constantly discovering new things about them mm -hmm. and new arthropods, and not just like little tiny mites. Like mm -hmm. they just discovered in, like three new giant tarantula species. And I also Great. love. <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> no, yeah, it is. It so, is really awesome. Yeah, and I just love. There's like, there's just so many really fascinating adaptations that they've mm -hmm. come up with, and I think wow. that's just they're just super interesting animals. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I know you brought some bugs here with you I today. I did. I brought right. a couple of different things. Okay. So, let's see. You seemed a little nervous about the tarantula, so we'll build up to the yeah, tarantula. thank you. <laughs> so, one of the things that most people like are praying mantises. So oh, So, I've yes. got a little baby. Oh, hello. African mantis. I used to catch grasshoppers as a kid, so this She one... loves catching grasshoppers, but hey, you probably didn't common. eat the grasshoppers. No, I didn't. Yeah. Oh my, she is yeah. feisty. Yeah, hello. so, these guys are super cool because they have really excellent Ooh. vision. So if you go up, she'll want to crawl up. Oh, yes, there she and goes. Yeah, so she's just a little baby, so she'll be about that big when she's done growing up. Wow. Yeah, and they're really, really interesting. A lot of people really love to get praying mantises as pets. Yeah. Because they're super, super charismatic. Really? Yeah, so they have little personalities. It's really interesting because you can tell they're looking at you and mm -hmm. checking you out. They'll eat from your hand, which is always really exciting. Cool. Yeah, and they're really fun. I don't like praying mantises because I get mm -hmm. emotionally attached and they don't have super long lifespans. And How so then long I, do they live? Uh, some can live up to six years, most live about a year, two years. Oh, yeah. And so I like tarantulas because they live for like decades and mm -hmm. so you can really fall in love with them. Did but. you have a tarantula as a kid? I actually, tarantulas are probably the only pet I never had as a kid, but I have them at really? home now. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, so what would you say your favorite bug is? Um. That's really hard. I have yeah. like favorite kinds of bugs. So uh -huh. like I have like a favorite kind of beetle. I have a favorite kind of tarantula. Uh -huh. I love spiders. I really like spiders. I think they're so cool, but wow. flies are pretty interesting. I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. if I could narrow it down. There's right. literally millions of them. Yeah. So it's hard to pick just one, but I, true. I, have a sweet, uh, I have a pretty big sweet spot for spiders. Wow, cool. And then one of the things that people find most exciting are cockroaches. Oh! <laughs> so I have some Madagascar hissing cockroaches. All right, so Madagascar, are they actually from the country of Madagascar? Yes, they're from the island of Madagascar. So these guys in the wild hiss a lot. The ones that we have. Can you hear them hissing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like a cat hiss, and I'll see if I can get them to hiss. But they only hiss when they're scared, and ours have seen so many people uh -huh. that they're like, pick me up, I don't right. care, poke me, whatever. <laughs> so I'll see if I can get her to hiss. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Oh, 
but you can pet these ones too. So these guys are one of the only insects that would like to be pet. Oh. They're called thickmotactic, oh. which means that they actually get stimulated when they have things pressing up against them, and they'll release a hormone, and that both pulls in other cockroaches. It's mm -hmm. an aggregate hormone, mm -hmm. and it also helps them grow faster and bigger. Oh, And so cool. they grow better together. They'll also groom each other and live in little family groups, which is super cute. That is super cute. <laughs> right? And so I have females here, and I can tell they're females because they have little flat heads. So if you look, that's kind of like a helmet, uh -huh. and their little faces are underneath. Very cool. Yeah, so these are pretty interesting. They also have a symbiotic relationship, and I just cleaned them so you can't really see the mites, uh -huh. but they have a special little tiny mite that lives on them, and it helps mm. keep them clean, and they provide a place for them to live and a place for them to eat. Very cool. Which is really interesting. Yeah. yeah. You want to try holding one, or mm. are you just petting? I'm just petting the cockroaches no right now. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the last things I brought is Machi, and Machi is our famous rose hair, which is a tarantula. All right. Let's do this. I'm ready. <laughs> Are you ready, viewers? So this is Machi. And okay. everyone loves Machi because she's a pro... Actually, I'll, I'll let you guess how old you think she is. I heard you mention it earlier. I'm not going to lie. She's 40 years old. She, now, I don't have a little birth certificate confirming <laughs> her age, but uh, Matt Camper got her when he was 16, and she was already an adult, so mm -hmm. she was probably also 16. Teenish. Now, I know that does reveal Matt's age, and he wouldn't want me to say that on TV, but... We'll bleep that out. Yeah, <laughs> she's probably close to 40. We threw her 40th birthday party this fall. We actually got a nice paint, a portrait painted of her. How cute! And so she's been doing outreach and being handled for the last 20 years. So she's very oh. docile. So if you're interested okay. in holding her, now's the perfect tarantula to hold. All right, yeah. If I'm ever going to do it, now's the time. Yeah, and she's an old lady, so you can see she's kind of like, I don't really... How long do they live for? No one really knows. People used to say about 20 years, and that was about mm -hmm. 20 years ago, and people were like, well, I, I still have my pet tarantula. Mm -hmm. So now they're like 30, 35 mm -hmm. years. So the oldest spider in the world was 42, and that was a, a spider that lived in a trap. It was a trapdoor spider, mm -hmm. and it was 42, and it died because a parasitic wasp killed it, not because it died of old age. Oh. So if you want to hold a tarantula. Okay, let's do it. She's super slow. Do you have warm hands? I do, she's, and they're sweaty, She's going to fall asleep right in your hand. Great. You can watch. I'm going to just edge her onto your hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. See, you're doing great. Yeah, I'm so they natural kinda at this. They kind of feel like little, little Q-tips, right? Mm -hmm. They've got soft little feet. And what's really interesting about tarantulas that a lot of people don't know is they're kind of like cats where they have protractable claws. So when they're nervous, their little little feet come out and it kind of feels more like toothpicks. Mm -hmm. And when they're relaxed, their little claws come in and it feels more like Q-tips. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> you did really good. Thank you. <laughs> it was very nice to meet you, Machi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did you. Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was an adrenaline rush for sure. I know that they like, if you have them in your home, they get rid of the other spiders. Is that, or is that a myth? Um, I've heard that before. Tarantulas mostly are eating other small invertebrates. Mm -hmm. If you had two tarantulas, they don't live together very well. They'll right. eat each other. But I don't think you would really get a tarantula in your home. Mm -hmm. Other spiders definitely have their territories in your house, mm -hmm. and other spiders don't come into those territories and leave alive. Okay. But mostly, I just think people should let spiders live in their homes. Mm -hmm. There's this whole concept that nature stops at the doorstep, mm -hmm. and that isn't really true. Mm -hmm. So your home is still an ecosystem, it's still an environment, mm -hmm. and so animals that are living there live there for the same reasons you do, which is it's warm, mm -hmm. it's the right humidity, and there's food there. Mm -hmm. So what do you suggest people do who aren't as comfortable with spiders as you are? Um, well, don't kill them. <laughs> they are very important. Mm -hmm. I think putting them outside is fine. They got into your house in the first place. They'll probably come back in, mm -hmm. but it makes you feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, you can try to reduce the food that's there. So if you're trying to get rid of spiders, you can get rid of what they're eating. Mm -hmm. But I don't think putting pesticides in your house is really mm -hmm. what I would do either. Right. So I think coming to terms with spiders <laughs> is always a good option. Just accept it. If I can hold one... Everyone right. Can accept well, it. and <laughs> spiders aren't out there to get you. Mm -hmm. So they're just, most of them can't even see you because you're too big for them. They don't even acknowledge that you're like another animal. You're just part right. of the scenery for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, good to know. Thank you so much for <laughs> no coming problem. on. No problem. Yeah. Really appreciate it. It was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rams, that is all the time we have for tonight. If you want to learn more about the Bug Zoo, you can visit the link below or you can find them in room E7 of the Plant Sciences Building. 
Don't forget to tune into CTV Sports on Monday to find out how the rodeo team did, and don't miss Local Beats' last episode of the semester on Wednesday. I'm Emma Iannacone, and have a good night, Aggies.